Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the pericardium. What is pericardium? The pericardium is a fibrocerous sac that encloses the heart and the root of the gray vessels. Okay, so this is the pericardium. is a fibrocerous sac that encloses the heart and the root of the great vessels. So what are the root of what are the great vessels? This includes the ascending aorta, pulmonary trunk, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the pulmonary veins. So this is our heart inside a sac. This sac is the pericardium. So heart is covered by a sac that that is a fibrocerous sac that is the pericardium okay. then we'll go to the layers of the pericardium it is fibrocerous so we have to know the layers layers of the pericardium okay so we okay. have fibrous pericardium fibrous pericardium and serous pericardium The serous pericardium has two layers, one is parietal layer, another one is the visceral layer. So it has two layers, the parietal layer, parietal layer, another one is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. The visceral layer of the serous pericardium is also also called epicardium. Also called epicardium. That is the outer wall of the heart. So, if you go to look at that fibrous pericardium, this outside fibrous pericardium, then inside this layer is the parietal layer of serous pericardium and the shiny layer over the heart is the visceral layer of serous pericardium or epicardium okay so if you compare with my coat this is the fibrous pericardium this shirt underneath this this is the parietal layer of serous pericardium my skin is the visceral layer of serous pericardium like that so we have fibrous pericardium this layer is the parietal layer of serous pericardium and the shiny layer on the wall of the heart is the visceral layer of serous pericardium also called epicardium okay we got that so what is the purpose of the pericardium what is the function of the pericardium Pericardium is to contain some important structure. It, it contains, if we go to the functions, so we have to say what is this, what are its functions? It contains the heart and the root of the 
of the great bases like the ascending aorta, pulmonary trunk, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, left and right pulmonary veins. Okay, this is one of the function to contain them. Another one is that it prevents overfilling of the heart. Okay, prevents over over filling of the heart so in that way it also protects the heart so that is the function of the of the pericardium now we'll go to the attachment attachment of the pericardium attachment of the fibrous pericardium would we'll go there the fibrous pericardium the fibrous pericardium is attached to the to the tunic adventitia of the great vessels tunic adventitia is the outer wall of the blood vessel we know that blood vessel has three layers tunic adventitia tunica media and tunica intima so fibrous pericardium is attached to the to the root of the is attached to the root of the tunica adventitia tunica adventitia of the great vessels like the ascending aorta pulmonary trunk superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and the pulmonary veins. So that is one attachment. Okay. And its attachment to the ascending aorta reaches up to the level of the sternal angle, the junction between the manubrium sterni and the body of the sternum. Okay. So there is one attachment. It is also attached to the at the lower part of the fibrous pericardium, it is attached to the to the central at the periphery of the central tendon of the diaphragm. Okay, it is attached inferiorly to the central tendon of the diaphragm so superiorly it goes to the root of, root of the blood vessels especially all the blood vessels including the ascending aorta and it is adherent to the blood vessels tunic and intima it is attached inferiorly the lower part to the central tendon of the diaphragm of the diaphragm and this attachment is called phrenico cardiac ligament. Okay, that attachment is called phrenico cardial. We can say phrenico pericardial. Phrenico pericardial ligament. Ligament. Okay, we got that. Or we can call it pericardiophrenic ligament, it will be more appropriate to say pericardio, pericardiophrenic ligament, that will be correct, okay, terminology, it is the pericardio or peric pericardiophrenic ligament or pericardiophrenic ligament. Okay, we got that, the attachment here. So, if you go on the anterior aspect of the pericardium, anterior aspect of the pericardium is attached to the posterior surface of the sternum by means of the sternopericardial ligament. Okay, the anterior.
surface of the pericardium is attached to the body of the sternum by sternopericardial ligament sternopericardial pericardial ligament okay these are the sternopericardial ligament we have two maybe three sleeves of cardio i mean the sternopericardial ligaments okay it is it is attached posteriorly with attached to the posterior mediastinal structure to the posterior mediastinal structures by connective tissue loose connective tissue okay. and it is covered on each side by the mediastinal pleura it is covered on each side by mediastinal pleura mediastinal pleura and you must know that fibrous between the mediastinal pleura and fibrous pericardium the phrenic nerve and pericardiaco phrenic vessel passes okay that is important to remember the phrenic nerve Nerve and the and the pericardiaco phrenic vessels are located between the Mediastinal pleura, mediastinal pleura, and the fibrous pericardium. In fact, it, it is embedded. These blood vessels are it, are embedded in the fibrous pericardium covered by the mediastinal pleura so phrenic nerve and the pericardiac of phrenic vessels you can call they are embedded in the fibrous pericardium are embedded in the fibrous embedded in the fibrous pericardium And is covered by the by the mediastinal pleura. Okay, we got the fibrous pericardium. Okay, we got the content of the pericardium. Okay, now to find out the serous pericardium, the serous pericardium. The serous pericardium is lined by the simple squamous epithelium and we know that fibrous pericardium is a fibrous tissue composed of collagen fibers. Serous pericardium is lined by 
simply school nuts to get paid. Okay. So the the parietal layer of serous pericardium it is pain sensitive. The visceral layer of, of the serous pericardium on the wall of the heart that is pain insensitive. Okay. We got the serous pericardium. Line by simple squamous epithelium, both the parietal layer of serous pericardium and visceral layer of serous pericardium. Now, what is pericardial cavity? The pericardial cavity is a potential space between the parietal pericardium and serous between the between the parietal layer of serous pericardium and visceral layer of serous pericardium this is is a potential space between the parietal layer and visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Okay, we got that. Okay, we got that. So we got the we got the we got the pericardial cavity. This is the part of intraembryonic coelom. This is a part of intraembryonic coelom in, in, in its development. Intraembryonic coelom in its development. Okay, we got that. And the pericardial cavity is a potential space. It contains only a few ml of serous fluid that help in frictionless expansion of the heart. Heart always expands, that is the diastolic contract, it is a system. So this frictionless movement of the heart is maintained by very small amount of fluid that help so that the heart heart can move without any friction. So it contains contains a few ml of serous fluid a few ml of serous fluid. for the frictionless movement of the heart inside the pericardial sac pericardial sac we got the, the space inside the pericardial cavity. We got the content. Okay. Now, to find out again here, if we look at the image, uh, the figure here, this is the fibrous pericardium. What is inside it? The heart and the root of the great vessels. Like that, this is what? This is the sternopericardial ligament. Sterno pericardial ligament it connects the pericardium to the sternum what are these these are the pulmonary veins how many pulmonary veins we have we have four pulmonary veins two left pulmonary vein left superior left inferior right superior right inferior okay we'll get that 
and this is the pulmonary veins and this is the aorta ascending aorta arch of the aorta this is the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava okay here inferior vena cava this is the superior vena cava okay this is ivc this is svc okay this may be the age i was pain this is pulmonary artery pulmonary pulmonary artery okay one of the pulmonary artery another pulmonary artery is here they come out of the pulmonary trunk this is the ascending aorta ascending aorta this is arch of the aorta this is descending thoracic aorta okay so pericardium is here pericardium above will be blended with the tunic adventitia of the blood vessel below it attaches to the diaphragm to the central tendon this part is the central tendon of the diaphragm tendon of the diaphragm okay we got that so we got the attachment of the pericardium pericardial cavity content of the pericardial cavity now we we'll go to the subdivision inside the pericardium we have two sinuses sinuses within the pericardium pericardial cavity okay so we have two subdivision the pericardial cavity one is the transverse sinus another one is the oblique sinus these are subdivisions subdivisions of the pericardial cavity pericardial cavity okay one is transverse sinus what is the transverse sinus transverse sinus is located between the artery and the vein so this is the transverse sinus okay we have the the pulmonary this is the pulmonary trunk ascending aorta okay ascending aorta pulmonary trunk this is the superior vena cava inferior vena cava okay this is the svc this is the ivc okay superior vena cava and inferior vena cava this is the ascending aorta ascending aorta oh. the pulmonary trunk is here ascending aorta pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk okay. and these are the pulmonary veins four pulmonary veins okay pulmonary veins pulmonary veins so this area this area this space this subdivision of the pericardial cavity is called transverse sinus so that is the is the transverse sinus this is used by the surgeon when they do the coronary artery bypass grafting they pass their finger and they may put ligature when they need on the aorta pulmonary trunk and they do the surgery so surgeon finger goes through these spaces and they use these spaces for light for ligating the blood vessels okay we got that and to connect with the heart lung machine this one sinus transverse sinus okay we got that the transverse sinus then another space between the pulmonary veins here pulmonary veins here this is the oblique sinus this is oblique sinus 
this is the reflection of the serous pericardium okay we have the oblique sinus so oblique sinus is present where behind the left atria okay and in front of the pericardium in front of the pericardium this is a caldi sac caldi sac okay so this is closed here we cannot go from the oblique sinus to the transverse sinus okay what is the boundary of the transverse sinus anteriorly ascending aorta pulmonary trunk posteriorly the superior vena cava and the left atrium okay that that include the pulmonary veins okay veins so that is the oblique peripheral sinus it has some clinical importance especially it gives some extra space for the left atrium to fill okay also in case of mitral stenosis it may be protruded back and it may it may press on the esophagus behind the pericardium may lead to some type of dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing okay so these are the sinuses within the pericardial cavity one is the transverse sinus one that one is the oblique sinus so this is the oblique sinus oblique sinus space between the left atrium and the pericardium okay this is a space between the artery and the vein okay we got the sinuses now we'll go to the blood supply of the pericardium blood supply the pericardium receives its blood supply by the pericardiacophrenic artery pericardiacophrenic artery also called pericardiophrenic artery okay or pericardiacophrenic artery that is a branch of the internal thoracic artery from descending thoracic aorta okay it gets blood supply from the superior phrenic artery superior phrenic artery it gets its blood supply from the esophageal arteries esophageal and bronchial arteries it is receiving blood supply from superior phrenic artery and also from inferior phrenic artery superior and inferior phrenic artery phrenic arteries we got the blood supply so pericardiac phrenic artery is a branch of the internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery is a branch of the subclavian artery so this is the blood supply arterial supply certainly we have also venous drainage that will follow the the arteries so we will get the pericardiacophrenic vein those are usually the tributaries of the brachiocephalic vein okay we will get the venous drainage through the azygous vein so pericardiacophrenic vein also azygous system of veins these are the veins associated with the venous veins of the pericardium now we'll go to the nerve supply okay nerve supply is very important the fibrous pericardium and parietal layer of serous pericardium are innervated by the phrenic nerve the fibrous pericardium and the 
where I tell ligand of the serous pericardium serous pericardium not supply is from the phrenic nerve it also carry pain sensation phrenic nerve we know the root below c3 c4 c5 also phrenic nerve there may be some referred pain people has any cardiac problem any pericardial problem people has pain on the c3 c4 level of the dermatome on the shoulder okay and people like to lean forward to avoid pain in case of pericarditis of okay, we got the nerve supply of the fibrous pericardium how about the nerve supply of the visceral nerve serous pericardium nerve supply of the visceral layer layer of the serous pericardium remember visceral layer of serous pericardium is a part of the heart this is the epicardium so it should be innervated by the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve parasympathetic by means of the vagus nerve Sympathetic, there is vasomotor and it is coming from the T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 lateral gray horn. We can call it intermediate lateral gray horn. That is the preganglionic fiber. Then it will go out through the ventral nerve root, go through the, the white ramicomunicans to the sympathetic chain of ganglion. Then through the cardiac splanchnic nerve, it will be contributed to the cardiac plexus and to innervate the heart plus the parietal layer of serous pericardium so sympathetic parasympathetic not the phrenic nerve okay we got that now we got the now we got the blood supply nerve supply now we have to find out some of the clinical anatomy okay anatomy regarding the pericardium Number one, pericardium is inflamed, we call it pericarditis. Due to many regions, maybe bacterial infection, tuberculosis, maybe due to viral infection, maybe after a myocardial infarction or, or open heart surgery. Pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium. Pericardial effusion this is inflammation. Inflammation of the pericardium that is the pericarditis pericardial effusion that means collection of fluid inside the pericardial cavity here collection of fluid where inside the pericardial cavity okay there is pericardial effusion okay so another term is called cardiac component cardiac tamponade that is repeat collection of fluid inside the pericardial cavity is so repeat it may it may compress the heart wall and it may endanger the life it should be it should be managed very quickly okay cardiac tamponade suppose in gunshot injury or any type of stab injury there will be collection of blood inside the pericardial cavity. This is a very rapid occurrence of collection of blood. Fibrous pericardium cannot give some space for that. So the collection of blood, especially the thick fluid like blood, will compress the, the heart wall, especially the right atrium, right, ventri right ventricle, and superior vena cava. And there will be engorgement of the vein, and we must send the patient to the emergency department for pericardiosynthesis so we need pericardiosynthesis pericardiosynthesis there is aspiration of fluid from the pericardial cavity both are the indication but this is we need very quickly to do that pericardial effusion it may build up gradually here 
due to trauma or damage, there will be very quick collection of blood inside the pericardial cavity. And we do pericardial synthesis, that is the aspiration of fluid from the pericardial cavity. We have cavity. Okay, we got that cardiac tamponade. Okay. Another term is called constrictive pericarditis. Constrictive pericarditis. Okay. In this condition, the pericard fibrous pericardium is very thick, so heart cannot expand properly. There will be right-sided heart failure low pulse okay that should be managed by the surgeon by the cardiac surgeon the constrictive pericarditis okay so in case of constrictive pericarditis or cardiac tamponade we'll get increase in jugular venous pressure on inspiration normally on inspiration jugular venous pressure should go down but in case of cardiac tamponade or in case of constrictive pericarditis jugular venous pressure will be increased during inspiration we call it cosmos sign cosmos sign okay that is increased jugular pressure on inspiration okay we got that in case of constitutive pericarditis we'll get cosmol sign plus we'll also get peripheral edema right-sided heart failure okay so these are the clinical part of our pericardium so if you like my video please support my channel please share the information with your friends if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Have a nice day. Bye now.